All right, and now we're, we're very pleased to host this next session about our collaboration with Snowman International, where we've outlined an approach and solution for the coordinated use of Loic and Snowman food food. Um, if you could project the slide down, please. Thank you. Um, we've done a lot of work since we initially and officially announced our joint collaboration in September of 2022, initially at the uh, Snowman International Conference in Lisbon, and followed by our conference in Fantasy, France. Um, and joining me today in this presentation are Jim Case and uh, Lori Davidson from Snowman International, um, Stan Huff, uh, co-chair of the Mike Clinical Committee, and also uh, joining in the presentation are some of our, I mean, the, yeah. and also joining in the presentation are some of our project team members and all of you. Um, think of this session as a conversational town hall where uh, you were providing updates, getting feedback, and exchanging thoughts and ideas. So this is a very collaborative, conversational session. Here's the agenda. We've divided it into two parts. Uh, in part one, we'll begin with some background. I'll be talking about that, then providing an update on our progress, and then we want to go over some FAQs or uh, frequently asked questions. And all of that should set the stage for part two of the agenda, where uh, we'll have some open free form discussion. Okay, to begin with some background, uh, it's important to know that our organizations, Reading Street and Snowman International, have been committed to working together uh, for quite some time to improving health and health outcomes and better care through the application and use of standardized terminologies. Um, we established a, a collaboration agreement in 2013 and then revised and renewed that agreement in 2022, uh, which speaks to our commitment uh, to work together. And more specifically, you know, our goals for collaboration are to support enhanced clinical system functionality and effective interoperability. Um, <clears throat> by establishing uh, principled relationships between Monk and Snowman CT. And also we want to be able to provide uh, effective support for providers and users who use different com combinations of Loic and Snowman CT uh, in their health systems. And what we've been working on together um, is called the Loic Ontology, which is a Loic and Snowman CT interoperability solution. Uh, and it's actually a Loic extension of Snowman CT, where Snowman CT provides the ontological framework and Loic provides the content. Um, and it offers the ability to distribute Loic content to both Loic and Snowman CT users. Uh, and that happens by creating um, Snowman CT and Loic concepts for all concepts that are shared between the terminologies. Uh, the Loic ontology makes it easier for implementers to have a unified approach for implementing each standard. And this offers them uh, the ability to select codes based on the requirements, whether they're clinical or regulatory. Uh, there are a number of benefits that the extension offers, including um, providing path and lab content from Loic in an understood format um, to countries that don't necessarily or currently use Loic. And uh, as such, this offers uh, the potential for broader adoption. Uh, it provides an ontological representation of Loic in response to needs and requests from Loic to have more of a, a computable structure. Um, 
our collaboration leverages my concealment CT subject matter expertise, ensuring that uh, the interoperability solution is authoritative. And uh, our collaboration also sets uh, a precedent for other domains and standards collaborations. So with that, I think I'm going to turn it over to Stan Huff. You can do it whatever you like. We'll need the next slide, please. Who's going to talk about our progress today, and then we'll work on the FAQs and things like that. So. So uh, since the last time, I, I think we talked together, we've made amazing progress. Uh, we were thinking back when we first started talking about it, maybe we could get three or four or 5,000 uh, codes done. And uh, just thanks to uh, some really smart people uh, that uh could look at the different structures and, and make some assumptions. Uh, we've been able to create uh, a preview version of the the ontology with twenty four thousand laboratory link codes. Now, I would hasten to add there. I mean, this is a preview. This is not the final product. This is not, uh, and and we made. <clears throat> Excuse me. We made assumptions in in how we could do this, uh, and what we did is started actually with probably the easiest parts of the link, which are the straight, sort of straightforward, quantitative measurements uh, from the laboratory. But even there, what we did is looked at common patterns, and basically we're able to map and say, you know, we've got a. a Quantitative measurement, uh, and it's a it's a mass concentration or it's a, uh, a a molar concentration point in time. It meets a certain pattern, then we know exactly how to map that to uh, the SNOMED machine readable concept model for um, for observ for observables. And so we you know we pick those off, and uh, you know Stephen. Uh, wagers on the white side communicated directly with Peter uh, on the SNOMED side, and you know they made that work. But <laughs> there are other kinds of common things actually that were kind of challenging, and that we've talked about now and have some solutions for, but we're still actually producing the content. So, for instance, uh, in some ways it's straightforward, but in other ways it's not. When there are all kinds of things that are not. If you, a different kind of observable in a sense, because they're a ratio of two other observables, uh, you know, creatinine, albumin ratios, uh, things like that, actually even simple things like hematocrits, which are a ratio of the packed red cells to the total, you know, blood volume. Uh, so there are lots of things that aren't in there. Uh, and so, uh, as you look at it, recognize that there are known patterns, known things. Uh, we didn't do any of the, if you will, coded laboratory items like when, you know, anything that's actually arsenic, uh, undetected, you know, urine pairs, those things just aren't there yet. So, I'm extremely we did create. And that came about because we've been having face-to-face -face meetings, which have been very productive. And uh, so, you know, we go forward. The, the preview that's been set up is now uh, hosted on the Regan Street site. And, uh, you know, it's, if you will, quote, unquote, earned or, you know, maintained in that, in that site. But it's obviously a joint activity, and um, and um, the link has responsibility for the model and that that representation, and uh, we're working incredibly close uh, because they're just information we need to share to do this well. 
So that's that. So just to underscore some things we said before, but some things we've we've also progressed the thought a little bit. So we are still committed to having all of Link uh, represented in the in the ontology and the SNOMED extension. Uh, that's going to take us. Uh, so we're as we also talk when there are things that are already uh exist both in SNOMED and in Oink and we're mapping those concepts and, and matching up and have a number one correspondence between the line code and the SNOMED code. Um a basic principle that we're doing is that all of the all of the parts of the line code uh, and some parts in the sense become SNOMED concepts so that the whole ontology is computable and there uh, are official identifiers for every item. Uh, I'll diverge a little bit to say it's it's inter it, it's been a process, for instance, that has raised interesting questions where uh, I'll bring up a couple of them. Uh, you get into the actual details of these things and it, it is, I really enjoy this part. I, I apologize. It's like a, a guilty pleasure. You know, you, you talk about what, you know, the vast test uh, for how, you know, allergic response to different environmental stimuli and you get into questions, well, is ragweed the same thing as red ragweed? Is the same as red ragweed? I mean, and, and sort of stuff that, you know, I don't know anything about as, as a clinician, but we get into them looking at, you know, sites, websites, where all of that kind of stuff is at. There's some things, for instance, that uh, are either completely wrong or that are obsolete. So there were a bunch of codes uh, in Moink about PMNs, polymorphic nuclear leukocytes. And, and um, you know, I was familiar with that term, uh, but you looked, you couldn't order a PMN test anywhere. Uh, look at all of the commercial websites, laboratory sites. Uh, and so, you know, that was basically a set of things that we could, we could deprecate in one because it, it either was never right or it's never used anymore. So there's just fun things that come up uh, in, in doing this that, that I enjoy. So I apologize for that. Uh, the things that we decided is that not going to use grouper codes. And I can say a little more about that. You know, grouper codes are codes that would not, they're, they're specifically there so that you can hierarchically traverse uh, and, and review the, the relationship of concepts. Uh, they're not used typically in, uh, they, they wouldn't be. Uh, we specify the link code in the sense that by definition that would mean that they would be missing some part that was needed to make it a very you know to make it a very um, a natural detailed relief mode code, if you will. Uh, and one of, one of the things that we've been we've become familiar with is the with ECL, the expression constraint language, and uh, and what ECL does is allows a user to basically uh, create an expression that will show all of the concepts that you're interested in. And what we decided is what we want to do is teach people how to use ECL uh, rather than make a lot of group of codes and put in a lot of work to try and create hierarchies that ultimately just express the bias of the person who created the hierarchy. So we want to enable people. That will be a learning method. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll find out that it's too hard or something. But right now, we're going to be, we're going to really focus on using ECL rather than making a lot of different grouper codes for these concepts. Uh, you know, uh, the other thing that we've done is for. Uh, People who are sharing data between systems that use 
primarily SNOMED codes and those that use primarily link codes, we've created uh, a very simple equivalence table so that you can say, oh, you know, this if you're translating actual instance data going from one system to the other, uh, you can basically do a very simple lookup that says, oh, this, this SNOMED code corresponds to this link code and vice versa. So translation of instance data becomes very, very simple technically to do. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing that we're doing is that the fully specified names for these link concepts that are in the, in the SNOMED extension correspond to the rules for the international edition, uh, fully specified names that would be in the international edition. And that's so that as appropriate or as needed, the line codes could be promoted into the international edition without any big modification or change in, uh, in the fully specified names. So that's another thing that, that we've been working on. So uh, other things that we're planning uh, in the future, one is creation of an ontologic model or in other, the way I would think about it is extending the machine readable concept model to have a model for document uh, naming and classification. Uh, and it's, in hindsight, it's clear that document names are not observables. <laughs> They're a different thing. And they, they need a different uh, representation to accurately capture the things that are important in classifying documents. And uh, one of the things that we're looking forward to, uh, Rob, Rob McClure and the document ontology group within uh, LOINC, we want to we want to get very precise in uh, what those elements are. You know, there are things that things that we have names for now and other things, but we want to review that and make sure that uh, as we make that machine readable concept model for documents that we're doing it uh, in the best way that we know how in light of the experience that we've had so far in, in, in the use and naming of the doc of, of document types. But that's not something that we're going on. Uh, one, of the, one of the interesting and challenging things was uh, talking about calculated observations. And when you say calculated, it's where uh, you have two uh, what would otherwise be uh, observables, and and then you do some sort of mathematical formula or something, and that could be as simple as calculation of a BMI, or um, it could be just a simple ratio between two things or other things. And it was uh, it was an interesting discussion. Because what are those things now? When you talk about uh, one one of the kind of classic examples was was anion gap, which for those of you who aren't necessarily clinical pathologists, that's a calculation that's made between uh, the the sum of the positive uh, positive ions and the negative ions that that are normally measured. And there's a gap because there are things that are, aren't usually measured. For instance, you can have uh, uh, organic uh, compounds, acids, other things that change that. In fact, metabolic acidosis, et cetera. Uh, so, but the question came up, well, okay, you know, we can easily classify that sodium and potassium and chlorine and those other things are quote unquote electrolytes, other things are liver enzymes, other things. What are what are these calculated things? Uh, and in the end, what we came to is, you know, they're a new thing. Uh, they're essentially defined by their by the formula that you use to calculate it. And you could work really hard, and you could say something. You know, you could say a paragraph that said what anion gap was about, but that's probably not fruitful because it doesn't it doesn't leave you know those those calculated things typically have zero or one uh, child that would be inherited into that group. So you're not, it, you know, spending a lot of time to name them and trying to classify them doesn't lead to useful 
uh, clinical value in, in using them. You, when you use them clinically, you would just look them up and you know put put it into the formula. So that uh, that discussion resulted in uh, a decision that we're just going to put those uh, calculated things into their own sub sub ontology. Uh, we decided that we would use uh, ref sets, uh, both extensional and intentionally defined ref sets as the way to represent value sets or uh, answer lists as they're called in loin. So that was an important discussion. Uh, we we need to connect and uh, there's a, and I couldn't tell you the exact, but basically what, what we need then though is we need a way to connect the value sets to uh, the observable. And uh, we've got a strategy for that. We still need to talk some about uh, collections, panels, and batteries. There are, there are subtypes of those. Uh, some things are just uh, a collection of arbitrary not arbitrary, uh, sort of functionally related categories like a chem seven or a basic metabolic panel. And you just have those things and, and actually their meaning is not changed by the fact that you put them together. So a serum sodium that was done as part of a chem seven means the same thing as a serum sodium that was done as an electrolyte panel or if it was done just as a spot test. Uh, so there are those kind of things uh, but then there are also uh, other things where you have collections of things. If you look at the things that are in LOINC, some of them, what they're actually doing is uh, creating a group. And the meaning, of the, the meaning of the elements in that group are changed by the context of what contains them. So it might be, I don't know if this is even a real, it's, it's an appropriate example, but I don't know if it's actually in LOINC. If you have, uh, if you're doing a, uh, a treadmill test and the person is exercising at a certain level, then you measure their heart rate and their, you know, uh, oxygen saturation and blood pressures, etc. Those now have a special meaning because of that context of being part of that Bruce treadmill test. So we need to think about those. Uh, and this is the kind of stuff actually I love doing. So uh, look forward to those discussions and understanding more. Uh, but the other the other aspect of this is there are also other arbitrary groupings of things where we expect there to be thousands and thousands of ways that people might want to collect or group things. So you know, thinking about well baby checks or uh, you know three month well baby check or uh, a six month prenatal visit, uh, those kind of things. Uh, there are also persons. Uh, for you know hip replacement or knee replacement, uh, and there's an industry going up around, you know what what should you collect, uh, what should you order, those kind of things, and in a lot of ways that's not terminology anymore. It's now much more about clinical workflow, and we need to think about how you you represent those names of collections. But, but recognize that there might be a lot of different organizations that want to create those collections. And we don't, you know, it, it may take a while for us to settle on what the right set of things are. So there are lots of issues, uh, you know, to talk about relative to that. Uh, we need to we need to work on, we haven't, I don't think, defined completely yet uh, how to deal with assessment instruments like APGAR scores and other things that have uh, a conceptual answer that that's associated with a numeric score uh, that then gets total to give you uh, an, an overall measure of you know fuel reliability that kind of thing. Uh, and again, another future thing we need to do is is talk about language translations, which is uh, really important and um, shades of that. We're just talking with Rory yesterday, uh, you know, we use, in, in these things, we use the, the uh, British or English spelling versus the American spelling of things, uh, fun, fun things to talk about there. And, and it branches into the whole question of how do we want to do 
language translations uh, related to this extension. So lots of things, fun things there. Uh, so the roadmap, uh, you know, there's ongoing work uh, to analyze feedback that we received from, from the preview. Uh, we need to continue to work on uh, looking at all of the long parts and finding those that don't have a representation yet in the SNOMED concepts and, and making those new concepts. Uh, so that's ongoing work. Uh, and then resolve known issues that some of which I've already made. But then in terms of, 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 if you will, the roadmap, what we want to do is we want to complete all laboratory observables. Uh, so that would a, a big step in doing that is representation of coded laboratory observables, such as antigen and antibody tests that are reported out as positive or negative or detectable, not detectable, uh, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, and uh, we want to also, uh, you know, there do some big cases that we'll have to examine as we do that uh, and understand how we, how we want to present those particular cases. Then we want to move on to clinical observables. So clinical observables are things that are direct patient measurements or uh, measurements that are coming from instruments or actually even instrument settings uh, related to the patient. Uh, so all of those clinical observables. Then we want to do the document ontology. Uh, and then uh, we want to uh, work on and see if we can provide value in the area of imaging studies. So that's kind of the roadmap of uh, and, and sort of the priority that we're working on. We'd actually appreciate your feedback. If you think that's the wrong thing to do or we should prioritize this differently, uh, we'd certainly be interested in, in your thoughts. Uh, logistically, uh, this is uh, not necessarily where I'm an expert at all, but uh, you know, we need to create a governance structure for the project. We need to figure out how we can have everybody who's interested in a given topic, whether they've typically been involved in snowmen or typically been involved in Lloyd, that we can convene everybody who's interested in a given topic and do that jointly uh, for all of the for observables. Uh, we wanna continue to work on how we automate uh, the actual transfer between the, the LOINT database and uh, the SNOMED extension. Uh, and we need to create an expert advisory committee that we can call on to give us guidance and thoughts about what we're doing. And then we need more money. <laughs> so, as I've said, one of the biggest challenges, I think, I know I, I hope it, I shouldn't qualify. The biggest challenge we have <clears throat> is not technical. It's it's helping people understand, especially people who are funding this kind of work, the importance of the work, and uh, and having appropriate resources to do the work. So that's that's a continuing challenge. So, all right, <clears throat> that's that's my part here. We'll go on. <laughs> So we're going to go through some FAQs. I'm going to facilitate, but let the uh, esteemed experts here provide some answers, and maybe we'll have some time for Q and A. We'll do the Q and A in the more uh, informal period. So, okay, okay. So for the first question, um, when is the first uh, production release of the Lloyd extension expected? We haven't set a date, uh, and part of it is because we don't have necessarily predictable resources about what, you know, how fast we can work on it. Uh, so I think we'll do it as fast as we can, but I don't know if anybody's got a better answer than that. Yeah, this work. Um, I think the simple answer, we... The first thing we want to do is get the feedback from, from yourselves and the wider community to see what what have we done wrong, what are the red flags, what do we need to go back and revisit and redo again. And obviously that will feed into how long it takes us to put that feedback back into the preview. But then we have to consider what what are the timelines, you know, we want to make sure that this is always 
near to frequent, you know, the releases of the LOINC content and then the international content so that they're lined up. You know, there's no point having a release that's out of date six months. So you know, you're thinking if the floor is coming out in February and, and August, September timescales, something's going to be a month or so later. So how does that fit into the feedback process um, and, and how much work we've got to do? Um, and, the, and the other question that we need to consider, and this is part of the advisory steering group we want to set up, is what is the criteria to say it's now good enough to be the first production release? Is it we've got to have 80% of the top 20,000 terms, for example, or are we happy just to go with what's done? So a lot of questions to get to that. The, the quick answer is we want to do it as soon as we possibly can. We don't want to be you know, playing around with fun things um, for years on end. We want to get something out as soon as we can. And as soon as we've got something that everybody's happy that we're going to get out as well. So. Okay, thank you for that. Next question is where will I go to download the production notes? Go ahead, Roy. Yeah, so, so there's a, a great site that the Regents Chief team have put up, loinksnowhere.org. You can go to that site, you can uh, register, and there you can download the preview. Um, and that's the primary place to go download the release. So the production release, I think it will probably be something similar. Um, and we'll discuss from a Snowman International point of view whether we make that available to members in a similar way that we do for other Snowman content at the moment. Um, but primarily, it's coming from the loinksnowhere.org website. Ooh. Question number three is similar, uh, but slightly different. Do you, uh, how do I sign up to get news about the extension or express interest in collaborating on the extension? It's the above. So, so yes, same, form, same website. Um, and, and I think we've really underlined it's really important that we get the feedback and we get the feedback in the same way. We, we've already had some feedback, which is the friends and family approach where we're getting emails to people on the team. I think the more that we can get through this sign up and provide the feedback approach, the more the team and the joint team can work together on that. So please go to the loinksnowmed.org website. There's an easy and great way to sign up and provide the information. Can I browse the extension? If so, how? Go to the browser. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. You go to that same link, snowman.org site, and there's a there's a box to click to the browser. <laughs> That's where you start browsing. Uh, we posted the link in the chat in the Zoom if you're on there uh, for the website and for the browser specifically. It's browser.linksnomad.org. Thank you for that, Stephen. Uh, what is the status of the Snowman content? Okay. <clears throat> From the start and continues the uh, the link, you know the current reloic link database uh, is is a source of truth, and we create things there, and then we move them into the extension. So that's the that's the source of the extension is the current link content, um, and so we're you know, we're not de novo making new things in the in the SNOMED extension. We make them in in WIC, and then we move them to the extension. Does the extension impact existing release cycles for LOIC and SNOMED? You want that one, Jim? No. <laughs> that's the that's the short answer. Is is that it, it doesn't have any impact on the the actual release cycles of the standards themselves. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so what are the um, next one concepts to be modeled? So, yeah, so the, we we said something about that earlier. Yeah. Uh, the plan is <clears throat> there. There's kind of two things, you know, by domain and then sort of by capability. I mean, one of the technical things we have to do is actually implement uh, so that we can represent coded. Uh, concepts coded observables if you will uh but that that said what we'd like to do is apply that then first to making the laboratory data complete then go on to clinical data then go on to document ontology then go on to uh imaging and other activities but again we'd appreciate feedback if that's the wrong thing but that's the roadmap as i understand now but yeah that 
so our focus right now is is on the laboratory domain. Uh, one of the things that Stan mentioned early on is the the identification of patterns that that we see within the one content itself. Once we identify a pattern and then have an automated way of dealing with all of the concepts in the LOINC terminology that fit that pattern, it's, I'm going to say simple, but I shouldn't use that. It's a straightforward approach then for us to include that into the extension. Um, but what patterns we should be working on, we really seek input from the community to tell us what's the most important to them to, to go forward. Because if you look at something like the top 20,000 concepts, there are a number of different patterns of LOIC codes that are represented. Um, and so we can't do all of those at once because we try to deal with things one, one pattern at a time. Uh, so, so that's why it's important for the community to go out and take a look at what we've done so far and say, well, I really need this aspect and you should be working on this. I think just to add, to put it into perspective, out of the roughly 24,000 terms in the preview, only about 8,400 are in the top 20,000. So it, 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 we focused on the patterns we could see quickly to give us the, the best coverage, but that best coverage doesn't mean the best coverage of the most used terms. So now I think our focus, now we've got that kind of percentages and numbers, you know, facts and figures always works. We need to focus on how, how much more of the, the top 20,000 20, can we get in basically, and what patterns can we see? Right, I think we have some stats on that. Stephen, are you able to share those stats about what's in the preview right now? Yeah, for the top 20, it's 45% uh, coverage. Uh, if you get to the top 2,000, it's closer to 50, so it ranges. Thank you for that. Okay. When requesting a new one concept, Will a new equivalent concept be created in the browser as, as well as vice versa? Uh, yeah, again, what, what we want is to, to unify that. So uh, we would like all observables to be created in a like extension then move to SNOMED. Now, we were very careful in the wording and the agreement that if there are, <laughs> you know, extenuating circumstances, emergency situations, then SNOMED has the right to make observables in that in that circumstance. Uh, but the general path we would like is again to have one community that's interested in observables or lab observables, and uh, that community uh, would then result in creation of one codes that then would immediately or as soon as we can be available in the, in the SNOMED extension. I, I think it's important to to identify the distinction between um, going into SNOMED uh, as opposed to going into the international release of SNOMED. What, what we're talking about uh, in this project is the creation of an extension to the international release. So when you say, will an equivalent SNOMED concept be created, uh, uh, a concept representation of the one code will be created in the extension, but not necessarily in the international release itself. So I think that that distinction between these two different products is important to remember. Just, just a further nuance on that. Uh, you know, in in setting up the preview and other things, we talked about whether you we just distribute just the just the one concepts and and the concepts the the snowmet concepts that are part of that definition or whether, for instance, it's better to release this as uh, an extension that would be on top of, if you will, the international release or... Uh, mm -hmm. or a country release, for that matter. Uh, and my own strong feeling, I think it's shared by others, is that the power of this is being able to use uh, and reason about all of the SNOMED content uh, in relationship to these codes. So, uh, you know, if if I'm looking at um, hepatitis B surface antigens or antibodies or something else, I mean, it's really interesting to, to it, it provides power to be able to not only know the definition of the white code, but then say, well, how, how does that component concept, how does hepatitis C relate to other kinds of hepatitis? How does that 
relate the RNA and DNA of that same organism. I mean, so the real power of this is, is not just distributing the extension alone, but distributing the extension uh, on top of or combined with uh, the international release or other things, because then you can reason about reason from the whole ontology of everything, is, which is, I think, really the goal and, a, and vision of what we're trying to do in the project. Anything else on that one? And the question then was very similar. We just answered that, not unless you want to add some more commentary to that. So, yeah, well, the, the short answer to number nine is yes and no. It depends. Um, yeah. as, as Stan mentioned earlier, for, for concepts in the observable hierarchy within SNOMED right now, we won't be creating a new link extension code that represents that. We'll simply be remodeling that concept to conform to the uh, to the MRCM that uh, that is represented by the equivalent link code. So what's what's in the international release now will stay in the international release. Uh, and then we, we may we may talk a little bit more about promotion later on, but but so essentially look at the international release and link extension as a continuum. Great. If an organization requests a new observable concept, who creates the concept? That's an easy. It depends. <laughs> Um, so as, as, as we mentioned, um, as was mentioned before, it, it really depends on where that concept is, is needed to be used, uh, and how quickly each organization can get it into their, uh, their terminology. So if someone has a real, really urgent need to do that, <clears throat> we would submit the request to LOINC, allow them to add the content in their release pattern, but if it was needed before that, or if it was needed to be modeled in the international release, while we would discourage that, um, we would uh, we would add it to the international release and that would become part of the extension. So this next question is, is there going to be a combined request process for LOIC and snow and C2? And that to everything, it's easy to get out calls. Um, I think if you think about where we hope to be in two, three, four years, then you know, some uh, a standard user who's using the LOINC extension, LOINC ontology, will submit a request to Regions Roof as they do now because that it is Regions Roof content, it is content directly from LOINC. If it's a SNOMED uh, user who is not using um, uh, the LOINC extension ontology and wants observable concepts, then they would come to the SNOMED international process. And we would then coordinate with the team at Regent Street or the steering committee, whichever government structure we, we end up on. Um, so I, I think it's kind of combined, but both organizations are going to keep the current request process and we're going to link them together where, where appropriate. Okay. All right, we've come to the end of the FAQ the next part of the agenda is open discussion, but we're going to take a break right now. Now it's time for open discussion. How many? All right, so we'll open the floor uh, for questions, or if uh, Stan, Jim, or Rory want to have some open discussion, you can you can do that. Do we have a question first? Everybody share. Oh, Jim Campbell. Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, um, thinking of uh, you know past endeavors, I I think about something that Kent Spackman brought up when we were working with the ICD eleven community, um, and. Um, you know, with moving forward at this point, in, in, in essence, we're uh, bringing together or creating a dialogue within two diverse, widely spread out communities. And, um, you know, our editorial process in SNOMED um, has, has uh, 
become fairly, um, well, let's just say that it's it's going to be a factor in how how fast this can go, okay? And I was wondering um, if some of Ken's thoughts back, back from then ought to be discussed again, whether or not there ought to be a um, crowdsourcing of, um, of editorial work um, you know, to develop this uh, body of um, of content, uh, where we get um, you know like um, terms basically uh, fully defined in the you know in a uh, convergent concept model. So, by the editorial uh, process, are you talking about the validation of the underlying models that are applied to the like terms themselves? Well, I think that, you know, there, there clearly has got to be education as a part of all of this, because this ontology stuff is not easy to understand, <laughs> speaking from personal experience. Um, and so there's, um, you know, building a, building a body of people who, of, of uh, people who understand the, um, the concept model, how it's applied, um, and getting them involved in the in the uh, process of um, you know doing the work to um, um, actually develop the uh, information artifacts that are needed for the uh, ontology. So, so one of the benefits of others jump in. One of the benefits of the approach that we've taken is is by using the WANC files as the source of truth for the development of the. Like ontology within SNOMED, uh, a lot of the manual validation processes that we needed to do, that we need to do when we're just doing concept by concept creation have been automated. And it, really it's, it's an overview. The, the editors that are currently involved in reviewing the output that comes from the processes that create the like extension uh, are fairly simplistic compared to what we have to do when we have one concept at a time coming in that we have to validate. So there's a lot of validation built into the automated processes themselves. We validate the source information. So for instance, one of the things that we mentioned is that we were doing a one-to-one -one map between each white part and a, um, an equivalent snowman concept. So once we validate that map, the process of actually putting the concepts together is a, a straightforward one button push type of thing that, that creates the concepts. Things that are a little bit more complicated are ensuring that the fully specified names conform to the naming conventions that we have, because there are some differences in naming between the white parts and the snowbed parts. But we're able to identify those fairly routinely without having to do a lot of manual effort. Uh, they come out in exception reports that we have. So the amount of actual editorial time that is dedicated to each individual concept is minimal compared to what we have to do with our normal editorial process. And that's likely to be true for lab. Um, it's not so obvious that it's going to be um, effective for clinical. We haven't jumped off that bridge yet. So. Um, so even, even in the lab space, but go, go ahead. I'd be, I'd be interested in why you say that. So, I mean, that it might be, you know, as, as we know, the content and anything is not perfect, but do you see particular problems that are more challenging with clinical? Because that's not obvious to me that it would be more difficult. I think the problem is conversion. Started, as I recall, when we discussed it, okay, um, you know, um, complexity builds. That's that's my personal observation. Thank you. Uh, this is Frankie from the Netherlands. Um, kind of 
building on what Jim said, but also what you earlier said, that it would be interesting to look at translation. That's one of the issues we're going, still going to tackle. The Netherlands is one of the few countries that uses both Link and Snomad and has to translate into Dutch. I'm fairly desperate to merge those two distinctive translations into a single one. So I'd be very interested in experimenting on how you generate a Dutch long common name from the loin parts, which are the snowman concepts, which we, which we could translate. Um, and I would be really interested in um, your process and how you generate the English as a long common name, because we probably be have to ta having to tackle the exact same issues. And I really recognize what Jim says from my experience. Uh, we do have an algorithm in place that generates a Dutch long common name for Loink, and I know that it works beautifully for lab, and it works rather less well for the clinical concepts, because there are so many more exceptions to the rule. We have a basic template in place that says, you stick these in this wor these words in a row and, you know, make add these filler words in the rule work. It doesn't really for the clinical concepts for many of them, so I think you will be facing issues there and I would really love to be uh, looking at those together. No, I, you know, I think it's a, a really important thing that now, and there are two things that come to mind. One is, um, if you will, the, the names of parts, which usually is fairly straightforward, though not always. But making good common names, which I think is what you said, you found to be incredibly problematic. <clears throat> and the, cha uh, the challenge has been, you can be systematic or you can be intuitive, if you will. The systematic names, some of them work great, uh, but uh, at some point, you have systematic names, and then people say, "I don't know what that means," you know, or it's awkward. And uh, there have been groups within the U.S. just trying to figure out how to make good common names in English, you know, from from the parts. And it's and quite honestly, they were really active, really vocal for a couple of years, and now we're hearing nothing because they didn't reach a good conclusion. I'll tell you my own bias in this, and that is you can't you can't do both things. So you can start out with systematic things, and then what I what I found is that what you really have to do is, especially for the common things, you need to just say what it is and remember it, and not try and generate it systematically, but just remember that's the name that's the name we're always going to use, and so it's this combination of you know for rare things you know. You probably don't have time to make really thoughtful human human design names for a hundred thousand things, but we can do it for a thousand things or the thousand common things or the anything that somebody complains about. But I think we need a little different process. But absolutely, we ought to work together on it because it's a common it's a common challenge. It's a it's a really common common challenge and, and a difficult challenge kind of a wondrously complex challenge to do it well. Hey guys, uh, so uh, uh, a couple of questions. First, you said that the this uh, preview extension is available at the, at the website for downloading and browsing. I looked, I can't find it, so the browsing part in particular, is it supposed to be right at the, on the, you know, on the standard page, like you could select it? If you, uh, if you, let, if you go to the loinksnomad.org page. It's, oh, there's a separate yeah, browsing yeah. page. It's the big blue button. Wouldn't it be nice to actually have a link on your main snowman page to hook you there? Um, should be. <laughs> So we're just going to be able to there's, 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 well, on the page, there's, it should be a page for the, the yeah, from either side, probably. Because yeah. you're right, I went to just the snowman page. Because guess what? I go to the snowman browsing page a lot and I don't see it. And that's why. Oh, you so you mean the snowman browser as well? Yeah, I'm at the snowman browser. Because aren't we browsing the extension? Is yeah, that what you said we could do? What, so, yeah. so, so we, we actually discussed that. Um, within the team, and the, the first step was that the Green Street was going to be hosted in the Green Street 
the world and the team is going to host it. Um, we might get the world where it's hosted in both locations if that's what the community wants. So yeah, it's just a link though. Oh, so yeah. it's, yeah. um, it's actually on the Regan Street. Yes, it's, yeah. separate, it's a separate browser. Ah. Okay. Well, so yeah, obviously. This is why we're having this discussion. Yeah. So that we can kind of get the feedback. Yeah, I think I think we need to improve the the access point so that it's a little bit easier to find because it sounds like it really is available and then we're going to get a lot of just feedback, but I couldn't find it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so that's one. The other one actually is a little, you know, as usual, like me and Stan were in the weeds. So the sense to go and deal with the stuff that you were talking about, Stan, with regards to groups. And um, I don't know if you were, I can't even remember the person's name, but anyway, we had, we had a presentation yesterday, maybe, where there was, maybe it was in Spain or something, but they were using groups a lot. They're about basically as I sets the one and the, and the lab groups, but yeah, that's right, and they're very dependent on it. Um, it, it, it a big chunk of it was just simply as value sets, right? Pre made value sets, which is pretty straightforward and, and very much aligns with the sort of stuff that you were talking about. But the other thing they were doing, which was actually pretty interesting, is they were using it in large data sets as a quality assessment tool, right? They were using these um uh, the counts for groups and then comparing those counts across different institutions to see if that was a way of saying well these institutions are different because they're actually doing different kinds of labs or no there's a gap here that doesn't make sense and we can actually find it which i found really kind of useful but that, but that enlightening and um and it made me think about one of the other things that i've been just contemplating not so much the document ontology thing, but just how Link uses the various capabilities inside of Link, right? I know you guys think about this too. So the the idea of what is Link part and then the, and then when the group Link parts, so panels and then groups. And um, and I think you know when you said we want to, uh, you probably don't mean this exactly, but maybe you did. We want to get rid of groups. Um, I started to wonder, I understand that in the context of what we just discussed, lab groups are, are queries into, you know, groups of links, essentially groups of one parts that make groups of, of links. And that, and so in the context of an ECL world, is an ECL query, totally get it. But there's another use of groups, I think, um, and we, and I've seen this in the context of the alignment with link parts where as distinct from panels, when I think of panels, panels are, um, and you, you kind of alluded to this, it's a collection of things that are links that have meaning in that particular collection, right? It's, uh, it's a set of things that are intended to, um, well, particularly the document ontology, right? It's a set of templates. So there are, not documentology, but documents. It's a set of templates that essentially define that document. There's a definitional characteristic to it. Like this is a, 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 a chem seven is made up of these seven, um, you know, items. Groups are different and they give us a lot of power, I think, in like where they're essentially a set of things that are usefully combined. But they aren't necessarily definitional. They're not isas. They are often point part of or collection in, right? So anyway, I I just raise this not so much to. Well, I raise it because I think groups are valuable and like, and I think we need to th think think about their context of use outside of just lab and maybe. Um, anyway, but you know, I can tell you for a fact, groups probably are useful uh, uh, broadly. And then it makes us, we need to be very clear about, okay, this belongs in a group versus this belongs in a panel and what that means and how we use that across all the different domains and like. And then, sorry, and then figure how this applies to this, a whole idea of aligning the snowman, right? Because that's where this is going. We want to, we want everything that I just said needs to be description, you know, I don't, I, I'm going to say it. Description logic pure in the context of value within aligning with something. Yeah. So 
yeah, I, I probably didn't say it correctly. Uh, groups are incredibly valuable. And my, my mental conception of this, and you guys, you know, other guys, correct me. See, what I'm thinking is that we define the groups by ECL. So there is a group, but it's defined by an ECL expression. And we can make common, commonly used, we can make a library of those. So that somebody says, oh, I want to see all of the, you know, all of the glucose measurements or all, you know, whatever the group is, whatever the semantic is that defines the group, that's defined, as you said, actually, you know, that's, that's defined explicitly by an ECL expression. And so that becomes, it, that becomes the name of it rather than, rather than physically making it and having to maintain it and put things in and out of it. We define it by logic. That's a shared, that's a shared meaning now, but that's the, the, the group is represented by that ECL expression. And we share those ECL expressions. We could give them names, we can do other things, but that's, that becomes the group. And now it's logic based and it's maintained so that, you know, given that your your principle is right if a new you know if i'm looking at glucoses and i want i want to distinguish laboratory done glucoses from home done glucoses i express that in the logic and then if a new test comes a new way to do glucoses comes then my logic is still valid and i don't have to man manually maintain membership in that group because it's it's a logic and so uh it, it's a new way of doing it, and I don't know. It may be it may be wrong, so we may have to do something else. But that's because the the groups that you create are uh, are incredibly diverse uh, and, and and sort of specific for a particular use case. And so we didn't we didn't want to you know make make group names that where it wasn't maintainable, where it was uh, open-ended and we couldn't do it. So we want people to use groups. Groups are valuable and useful, but we would like to define them by ECL and, and, and make a, if you will, sort of a marketplace of, of groups that are defined logically as opposed to defined by um, uh, extension in, in a physical database way. Question. Yeah. yeah so yeah, my, my response is you, you, there's nothing that you just said that I disagree with in the context of lab. I think, you know, I, I was just, I wanted to walk back and ask Stephen how many groups we have that are in the clinical domain. But I'll, I mean, lab is, we have, I, we, I asked yesterday, I was like, how many groups do we have? It's over 7,000, right? But I'll bet 80% of those are in lab, right? But these other ones, again, I, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, and I think that it's true, but I don't think it's completely true. And I well, and there's, and I think there's going to be things that are not definable by ECL that we do want to maintain as groups. Well, I'd like to I'd like to work through examples because you yeah. may you may well be right. Yeah, I, the, I mean, I mean, there there, and again, see, I'm thinking of of. Uh, Groups the way that you're new, they're used now. Essentially, they're they're typically um, they're they're less specified than than the terminal elements that are used in in the cat. So you right. talk about glucoses, you know, the group is that these are you know home glucoses or something else, and there are a whole bunch of different. But the children are all different specific methods. But Stan, stop but in, 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 in the, there are a whole different kind of groups, like I said, that are arbitrary that are not defined by they're they're defined by um you know th this is what i want to collect for a well baby checkup that's not defined by logic you can't define that by ecl you could define it by ecl right. but essentially you'd be doing the same thing you'd right. just be saying these are the concepts that i want to be part of this group that, that, that that's where i'm going with this we, we can take it offline and, and that, that gets to this question of whether we should be making that a panel or a group but anyway yeah so there's a question here yeah. Okay. Jim, you'll be next. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm Laurie Anderson with NCQA. We I write value sets that are used in performance measures. HEDIS ECQM includes both LOINC and SNOMED. How will this impact me writing value sets in the future? 
will there be an impact? Well, I think that it's, it, it makes a new option for you because the value sets now, you know, in, in, in Loink, they were answer lists and, and the answers weren't actually concept based. They were textually, you know, text based. Now you'll have answer lists that are concept based and those are available to you. Uh, you know, whether we should register those in the NLM, you know, value set authority or something. I mean, I would appreciate your input on that. Uh, but I think my way of thinking about it is it's a, it's a new resource that you can depend on. And if you want to use it and, if, you know, and, and I, I would say we want to make it useful. So tell us how we can make that useful for, you know, your use in quality assurance. Thank you. Uh, Jim, Shelby, you had a question? Uh, we'll come to you, Jim, in just a moment. Uh, we have an online question. How will Snowman handle XXX link system? These are seen in codes like this, and then there's a 13425-4. Uh, Stan. Past sense coming back to haunt me. <laughs> so, so this historically, sorry to go down a rabbit hole. I made up XXX, okay, and and the the purpose the purpose of XXX was uh, you know we found situations for instance where uh, a required part of the line code uh, you didn't want to specify it as part of the line code you wanted to specify it as something that should be sent as a separate field in the message so. Uh, and then XXX was awful because actually not too far into this, I started getting bounces on emails because it had, it, it interpreted that as XXX pornography stuff. <laughs> so that was an awful choice. But uh, the, what our goal has been, and it, it, it has been to replace XXX with uh, a bracketed name that says the domain from which uh, that value should be. So the, the XXX concept, one would be basically that you're doing something where the, you, you did a test, for instance, and the specimen was not specified. Uh, so you could use it there, or you could use it when the specimen was specified, but it was done as a post-coordination. That is, you know, I did an antigen or antibody test and, and that test is valid whether you did it on a body fluid or blood or CSF or whatever. Uh, and in, in one case, they might not even tell you what the specimen was and that code would be used in that case. Or you could have the other situation where it was known, but it was sent as a separate field in the in the message or post coordinated if you will in the message but what we wanted to do then is say in either of those cases the xxx would get replaced by a name a concept uh, essentially a value set that would say what are the possible things that you could post coordinate uh, this primary concept with so we need to fix them uh, I don't know that we probably ought to put that on our list of how we want to handle XXX and if you have good ideas, but that's the general philosophy is we want to replace that essentially with a value set of things that can be used as a post coordinated representation with that um, with that primary concept. So we want to fix them. That's the bottom line. Okay. It's right here. Uh, Ashley Guillermo. Oh. Okay. Um, Ian, please uh, will come. <laughs> um, I, I think that, for example, many of us have been familiar with the, the other terminology. Yes. So, uh, in our case, we live in this number world, but we have translated along and we are familiar with long, but not with all the details, yes, or, or not the history. So, we need to catch up. Uh, and uh, the same happens with the line folks that will we'll have to learn more in um, For example, I, I didn't know who created XXX. Yes, now I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and uh, and then when you describe XXX uh, in my Snowmedian head, yes, it's more like a group because it's you don't have that information. So at the end of the day, it may not be usable directly. This is an abstract code in certain way because uh, it doesn't have a specificity in terms of the meaning. So uh, at the end of the day, if you take out the XXX part, uh, it will become a grouper that is abstract. It is not to be used directly, probably, or it has to be done. There will be some machinery in that. But my point is, the terminology have similar, the same words to describe different things. So, for example, an FSN for a Snowmedian means uh, a description that is able to stand alone, yes, uh, that uh, everyone should understand, that should be internationally uh, transferable, and uh, and so on, that is not culturally specific and those kind of things. Uh, in uh, in law, it has a different uh, a different meaning because uh, Lawrence was originally designed for an expert audience that uh, by to start with you need to be aware of the user guide and all the conventions and so on so in, if you don't know the conventions you may not un fully understand even a long name or, or other things uh, the other part that to be called similarly are the groups and uh, and what the what Jim said was, uh, or what uh, uh, Stan said, well, we are not expecting to be creating groupers, but those are snowman groupers. Those are logical groupers. Those are logical um, concept definitions that, uh, yes, you can use them. You can imply them with ECL, but uh, in some cases it brings uh, some logic to the hierarchy, and even if it is not to be used directly, it gives some structure. I don't know if you have browse still at the preview, but it is uh, quite disorganized to the eye because uh, everything is mixed together. You are not sure if it is snowman coming from snowman, if it is coming from line, whether it is it has already been bashed and, and so on. All of those things are things that are going to be improved over time. And uh, it is a uh, terrific uh, work. And we don't want to interrupt good people doing good things. So clearly, all the discussions are not disagreements, but attempts to, to, to help. The groups, in the sense of, uh, of uh, part whole relationships, are not directly supported in the, in the summer at this point in time, but these metonymical uh, relationships. Uh, what are in the snowman only modeling in, in the body structures yes. uh, but there are other areas like uh, devices where you have a device that is composed from several parts and those parts are in certain way grouping together so the groups themselves the, the groups in, in line they will have to be dealt with but they are not to be confused with the grouper uh, concepts or the aggregation nodes so I, I will not be concerned about about that uh, there are a couple of other areas where uh, those uh, that are looking at this uh, would like to, I think, would like to see. The one thing is that clearly there are two different communities and you may choose one or the other format, but we are expecting source transparency. Yes. So uh, the user that is using the long, uh, the long uh, format. Uh, and he's uh, doing a query with uh, the hierarchy, the long hierarchy that you described before, should have very similar results or identical results if they are doing it through the extension. Yes. So there should be source transparency. I should get the same value set whether we are using your uh, your expressions or you are using plain ECL yeah, for expanding the value set and so on. So. In some cases, it may be there may be a need to create those grouper concepts because the snowman is full of grouper concepts. So it is uh, hard to say, well, this is not group because it's coming from from long. But then you have I don't know finding related to communicate to ability to communicate or something like that. That's a clearly a grouper concept in the snowman. So it is not that the snowman is not supporting that. What 
we usually say is that ideally we don't want to group our concepts, but if you must have it because of uh, some significant requirement, it should be sufficiently defined. Yes, which is in some way the equivalent to okay. say that you can, an ECL query can can gather it. So it is sufficiently defined. We don't want intermediate primitives at all, at least uh, not in the main axis. But uh, coming back to to the to, to the initial discussion, uh, we have been looking at the the preview and it's quite promising. There, there are so many good things there. And then obviously, because it's a very big work, uh, there are obviously things that could have potential for improvement. Um, there are some areas where probably we need more information, like, uh, for example, it's difficult to assess all those codes, but it's more easier to assess the templates you have been working on, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, trying to go for an evaluation on looking at the different patterns that you have been looking at, that will be quite useful. Um, even for the areas that uh, you haven't been working on, for example, on clinical learning, there are many clinical learning uh, calls that are expecting a value, a numeric value, and those usually don't have any conflict with uh, with the snowman, yes. But uh, then there may be others that are, are expecting qualitative uh, uh, assessments or, or present, not present, and so on, that may already be in the snowman. And then you have the order of orderables that are of the significant interest for, for countries. So I'll say there are many, many patterns. I think we need to start discussing the patterns and making them visible so the community can start uh, looking at, uh, at, uh, at them. And uh, then there are many, many challenges, like for example, the thoroughly hierarchy concept model in the summer is much more complex than what we are looking at in, in, in learning. And perhaps it's too complex. Yes, and uh, then you have to right size it and, and so on. So, mm -hmm. and uh, finally, my two major points are, uh, this uh, project has a very high risk of being too successful. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and that means that uh, you may end up uh, with saying, well, we are not sure when is the production release, but uh, if it is uh, good, people would like to adopt it or at least have predictability about going there or investing resources in education, awareness, and so on. So clearly, uh, and with a standard format, you are also encouraging a mechanism for history tracking or uh, extensibility and so on. So that opens many things that countries that are using this summit are used to have. Yes, to say, well, I can extend it, I can promote it, I can, uh, I can do many, many other things. So um, we are expecting, we see more interest, uh, obviously in, in, in our community using fire, they are very satisfied with LOIC and they, they are fine with doing, keeping, uh, keeping LOIC the way they are. They don't want to, to change. Um, on the other hand, then there's no more than seeds that we see uh, in some areas are quite interested and, and, and think that in the long term, those NRCs may be part of kind of uh, line collaboration, national centers or those kind of things because mm -hmm. of the, the, the model, the evolution of the model is you will be doing something that is going to be more international and then it's going to be localized to many other, many other places. So that is going to be a significant uh, challenge, how to think about that have to think about the license, the, the, the licenses in, in SNOMED and the license in law. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not clear about how, what will happen if you have an extension of the launch extension. Yes, whether it will be there, you know, it will be transferable to law, it will be transferable to SNOMED. Uh, we all want it to, to be uh, widely available, yes, uh, and under the usual rules. But uh, those kind of things probably have to be worked on. And uh, 
<laughs> you know, we, we, we have a few more questions waiting, but <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. Did you, did you uh, any of you want to respond to any yeah, of the points? I mean, one of the things, just to be clear about mm -hmm. that, we're not going to be adding groupers. I think if you look at the, the current alpha release right now, you see that it's fairly flat. Um, it's not as flat as we thought it was going to be, but it, but it is fairly flat. Um, what we talk about when we talk about groupers is purely organizational groupers. You know, those that create a more dynamic hierarchy than just the flat list and, and things that are based on the definition. We, we can always create less specified concepts that allow us to create more of a pyramid shaped taxonomy than what we've got right now. There is a use case for less specified um, observable codes that are used in modeling other concepts within SNOMED, where we don't need the, the specificity that is defined by the, the mandatory five parts of a line code. And so in those cases, they appear as grouper concepts, but they're actually applied to other parts of the terminology in order to sufficiently define. Uh, and as you said, we would not be adding any um, higher level concepts that would not be sufficiently defined. So everything would be defined. Um, you had a couple other questions in there too. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll move on as I think about that. So, uh, hi, uh, Jim Shalvey. I had a question that's um, in a slightly different direction. Um, just as you're aligning semantically uh, like with Snowman, um, do you feel there's a room for alignment with uh, specifically, uh, you know, uh, su in substances in Snowman and Sudan, the bridge to our norm ingredients, term types like ingredients, because you know, from a decision support side and from the outcomes analytics side, that's kind of a, a special space uh, where there's a lot of uh, a need and impact right now. So I just want to get some thoughts because I can see the alignment between Snowman and Loic, but I'm wondering what happens with term types like ingredients or precise ingredients and then and the and the um, Oh, the, the various uh, metabolites that are active that will show up as drug levels or MICs and life, but actually are not actual drugs or substances that can be found in snowmen. So just maybe a few words about that. We we do have a, a substance redesign project going on right now. Uh, we haven't directly addressed an alignment with the, the substances in RX norm, but we have been modeling our substances uh, in alignment with other uh, drug standards that are that are out there. Uh, so if there's something specifically that we would need to address with, with RX norm, uh, that would be something that we'd be interested in doing. We haven't done that today, but substances obviously are a very important part of SOMEN in, in terms of modeling other concepts as well. Great presentation. I want to go back to a question that Lisa asked with NCQA. Uh, my interpretation of that was if they have a measure that's based on a value set that's defined in one for laboratory, um, and they want to define them in the snow um, and have both value sets. From the you know, US NRC perspective, how then do we package the one extension into the addition, and is that something that ONC would allow? And as a competing standard, some direction about going down that path, as well as a, a technical um, setting up of a dependency to include the link extension as uh, part of an addition. So I'll, I'll take the, the technical answer. Yes, I mean that's just about essentially including. As part of the model dependencies for the US content would be the LOIC ontology. Um, and it's just a packaging question at that point. Um, and that's obviously a discussion that we have providing the tooling for the NRC as well. Anyway, we would have that discussion online, and, and the moment you want it, we would do it. Um, but I think the other ones are well above my pay grade. Yeah, and, and the module dependency would be on the international release, not on the, the US edition. Just super quick, um, more comments than anything. Thank you guys for doing all this work. 
that's an enormous amount of work and um it, it, it's been a long time in coming and the group are saying work itself out um i'm pretty convinced um that this is your alpha release um, i also think that relying on ecl is it, 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 at, at this point is great because it's going to actually have to elevate the competency of both um groups of users uh, and that includes the snowmed users on how to actually understand a concept and navigate it and make it perform the way it was intended to perform and you know i actually think it's a great normalizer of sorts and it's going to it's going to require elevation of our own competence so i just want to say thanks it's fabulous work and i however we can help great This one down front. Are there any online questions? No. <laughs> um, comment in response to some of the uh, earlier questions about RX Norm and the like. Um, on, um, I believe it's Thursday this coming week at the SNOMED meeting, Stan and members of the NLM staff, um, and uh, we are going to be doing a workshop that will be discussing a um, an RX norm uh, LOINC SNOMED um, ontology. So for those who are interested. Questions? So I know, Yemo, you didn't finish all of your questions. So we will. Um, so this is this is a question that may be stupid, but how how will the new ontology work in fire? Does the fire standard need to support this in any way? Do we need changes to the standard? I know there's been a, a challenge of people using codes and translation with fire in the past. You know, I think it just offers. Um, I don't think you need to do anything different. The, the thing that the concept, the thing that comes to mind is that you know, fire is used internationally, and and in a sense, this activity was designed to try and help consistency. Because if you're using fire in a country that predominantly wants to use SNOMED, and you're exchanging data with a country that wants to use LOINC, then this makes that easier because it's a one-to-one -one correspondence and you can just translate one-to-one, -one, you know, data instances. But uh, it doesn't change uh, anything else, um, you know. In, in the U.S. is defined by, you know, ONC, you need to use light codes, you'll use light codes. Uh, you now have new capabilities because you can reason about that code in ways that you couldn't reason about it before. So you've got new capabilities, but in terms of specifying what has to be in a message, that that really remains completely the same as far as I can think of. Maybe somebody else can think of it. Yeah, I, I can add to that and I will, I should let you add to it. Go ahead, Rory. What were you gonna say? And I'll see if I agree. <laughs> Well, so I was, I was going to actually raise there is one thing we haven't got an answer to. We need to work out what that is. Is which which code system do these belong to? Yeah, that's what I was going to get to. Yeah. <laughs> so, and we don't know the answer. Well, that's the I think for you, honestly, but that's me being me. <laughs> um, so the issue is that there's this this conceptual conundrum that you've got a concept that actually has two canonical identifiers. And um, and I I preface that by saying it's a conceptual conundrum because I don't really believe it's a practical conundrum. What what's going on in the context of fire is that you're you know fire is an exchange artifact, and when and oftentimes when we get into these kinds of problems. Where we get confused is we forget that it's about exchange. It's about right edge to edge stuff. 
and for an edge to edge thing, you what what it's saying. The simple answer is you decide whether you're communicating a link thing or a SNOMED thing, and you have an identifier and you put that SNOMED concept. I'm sorry, the, yeah, well, the SNOMED code system identifier and then the concept identifier that's appropriate for that code system into your message. <clears throat> the fact that that thing also lives in another code system as exactly the same thing, not only is not important uh, for you as an exchange person, but actually is fine. Um, the receiver has the same situation. Um, Imagining a world where receivers actually, one, understand that you gave them something useful, and two, know what to do with it. They would still do something with it in the context of their own use. I mean, if it turns out that what they want is like, and they need to understand it in the context of like, no problem. Snowman, same thing, in fact, because if you receive it as a like concept and you're sophisticated, you understand you actually also have a snowman concept and then you want to want to reason on it. Um, you should be able to do that. So again, no problem. Where the where the, that conceptual conundrum gets complicated is if you're managing the um, in in a system, uh, in a receiving system or sending system, and you have these two code systems, and you you think, well, I have to have this thing in both places as one thing, and and I would suggest talk to me later. Don't do that. <laughs> Did you do you agree, Roy? Yeah, I, I think we're, we're kind of in a new world, but there's, there's nothing like just in any other kind of stand at the moment. Every stand is quite standalone. And what we're saying is that we're now getting a nice overlap between the two, where you have two identifiers for exactly the same thing in the fire world, ultimately. Um, less so in the research world and the more detailed analysis, but for the messages coming across, uh, I agree entirely with you, Bob. You know, it's great if you can see the snowman coming across, but if I haven't got snow in my system, but I'm expecting a loin code, but it is loin, but it's not loin. We need to find out where, I think this is going to be a discussion with the fire community, where we go with that. Yeah. So, yeah, the, I mean, we've had that issue with other standards for a long time. We just call them maps. Um, now what we're doing is we're integrating that into a single structure, um, which we're hoping will uh, facilitate the, the need to uh, maintain and update that as opposed to maintaining and updating a map, which is much more complicated than what we're doing. So what that means, though, is, is that I think we need to talk about, in the context of this fire discussion, um, also supplying a mapping data, a, a concept map, literally a resource concept map. Now it's going to have, well, 25,000 rows in it or whatever it is, right? But I, I understand that that's literally what you're publishing, but it should be, you know, to the extent that concept maps are gonna get used and I, and, I, and I think we should strongly consider making that a valuable thing. I wanted to say resource because it, it is a resource, but I mean, it, you know, this is gonna be a valuable resource in the context of the fire world. We make, the way we describe of this in, in FIRE is concept maps. The use of concept maps has not been widely kind of understood or integrated into systems, but it literally is the answer to the question that we're talking about, which is if I receive a link and I expect it to snow that or vice versa, um, what do I do? And um, ooh, is this the same thing? And if what we publish as a joint effort is this integrated extension that's in the snowman world so that we can maintain it and, 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 and reason over it, we need to also publish the fire concept. Map. So, so just, yeah, just to confirm, 100% agrees. In the extension of the RF2 package that's produced, we actually have that one-to-one -one map. So it is there, is there an alternative identifier? Um, a controversial question back to you. <laughs> Is it a map? It's a, I'm not, I'm I know it's a map is, you know, you, you, it's not always the same thing. You go from one code, they tend to be one to many or many to one. This is very much a one to one thing. There's just it's another a way of saying the same thing. Yeah. And it, the, all, all it is, is a construct that um, can be used in a particular way that says the same thing, right? I mean, I, that was a very kind of convoluted technical way of saying yes, but 
but but because I, well, that that got to what I was just saying about saying before is is that the use of concept maps I think is a little bit not well understood, and this would be a very clear description of the usefulness of concept maps in a very simplistic way for organizations that don't understand what's you know why are you telling me about code systems? You just send me this code. And now all of a sudden it's a different code than the one I want. And you're saying I'm supposed to figure out the code system. We just say, don't worry about that. Go to the concept map and it'll tell you what you want. So I think it raised an interesting question for, for us working on this is obviously we're very much focused on what we release in the Loink ontology package. But if you're in the if you're on the Loink side and you haven't got the Loink ontology package, you also need that map. Okay. So where that gets to be how is the discussion. Okay. Another whole question to discuss. We have time for one short question <laughs> i'm Nick Petitier, is a clinician and i'm a little bit confused about this whole discussion uh, and the question is as a clinician i want to follow a child with thalassemia uh, if it was in loink i can see all the time the hemoglobin six four whatever height in loink how would that uh, show in uh, snow snow math i think as I know, if, if I tried, that it will be all the time low. It will be all the time anemia compared to normal values. So uh, I think for clinicians, it's very important at what time uh, classification or, or code is best used. Uh, how can, can you explain how SNOMED uh, can help us to follow a child with thalassemia, which always has a low hemoglobin. Well, the, the observable hierarchy in SNOMED, which is where all of this is going, is a, a semantically equivalent representation of a light code. So the, the fact that you would have to have in the SNOMED representation, you would also have to have a value associated with it that represents the, the hemoglobin level. Just like you would with a white code, so there's really no difference between <clears throat> the the way that the terminologies are used, other than the fact that they have a different structural format. White code has one format, a snowman code has another format. Other than that, there's really no difference. They're equivalents. And then going back to the the topic about concept map is one of the advantages of the approach that we're taking is that we're a 100% equivalence map, and you don't have to worry about broader than or narrower than mapping and how assured you are that, that in fact there is an equivalence. So I hope that answers your question. All right. That would be associated with the snowman code, just like it would with the white code. But it does not give the actual code. It does not give the code. No, so, the snowman so code does not give the value. So how, who decides whether it's normal or not in case of a, a, a the clinician? Clinician. Yeah, yeah. So I think we are. Uh, thank you for that question. And thank you for everyone's questions. Uh, it's time for lunch or a break. Which one? Lunch. Okay. And feel free to talk with panelists during lunch. We'd be, you know, happy to talk further. And um, enjoy your lunch. And we'll see you back at what time, April? at 12.30. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's wonderful.